This is a review of repairing the DeWalt 20 volt drill. This is model DCD780. This comes with the five piece 20 volt set by DeWalt. I've already taken the screws out and gone inside this once. I just wanted to show you while I still had it apart how the drill goes together and uh, take, you take a look inside. It's very easy to take apart just like I suspected. I used a Torx T10 screwdriver very simple, easy to find, and took apart 10 screws in total. There are four on the nose. There's one, two, three, and four, and six down the sides. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Deep, deep one right there. Once you've done that, the nose pulls forward a little bit, which allows the side to release. It's uh, not very hard to do that. It just seems like you do have to do that to get the sides to come apart. And then you just sort of have to wedge the two sides apart. Uh, one thing that did happen to me as I was wedging two, the two sides apart the first time is the switch here above the above the uh, above the trigger that does forward or backwards fell out, and so I actually thought that's what was blocking the drill because, as you may know if you've already seen my first video, the drill wasn't moving. There's something basically stuck inside of the motor here. Now that I have it apart, um, you can see all the inside parts. It's not a very complicated device, and drills never really are. Um, you can see all there is to see on the inside pretty quickly and easily. And there's the switch here on the top, trigger, and the triggering device. These things usually set back into uh, pre-done, prefabricated pieces, and there's not a lot you can do with the triggers. I've tried to replace them on drills before. Uh, usually you have to replace the whole component. And here's the battery feed down here at the bottom and LED light right there. The only thing you have to be careful with, of course, is when you're putting these back together, you do have to make sure that you uh, you get them all back together cleanly in the order in the places that they were. So you have to make sure that the trigger is snapped back in place, that this guy's still attached to the, uh, the trigger so he can go back and forth freely, and the LED hasn't slid out of place, and make sure that the drill head here actually is still where he belongs. Uh, not much else I wanted to show you. I was able to clear whatever was blocking the drill from turning, but I honestly don't know what was stuck, which bothers me a little bit. Uh, I'd like to say that there was oh, just some random piece in here that fell out. Nothing fell out, but as soon as I took the drill apart and put it back together, and I actually can put the battery in with the drill apart. I don't know if I'd recommend that. It may not be a good idea, but as you can see, everything freely turns now. So. Whatever was keeping the drill from turning before uh, is fixed by, uh, was, was fixed just by removing the side and uh, shaking it a little bit and seeing if anything fell out. Uh, like I said, I didn't see anything fall out. And uh, I'm going to shake it now. Well, there goes the top. I'm going to have to put that back together, I guess. Anyway, um, when I did shake it and nothing fell out, and even now when I have the whole thing apart, let me take the battery back out before I try to do anything else. I'm still not seeing anything in here um, that could have been blocking it. So I'm still, you know, I'm at a bit of a loss to why it uh, it wasn't working, but, you know, I do have it working now. Yeah, anyway, as soon as I put this all back together again. Uh, but that's all I have to show you. I just wanted to show you what was inside the drill and how you could take it apart if you need to. Uh, it's not necessarily something you could do a lot of maintenance on, but it's a very simple device. So I was able to fix it, and um, hopefully uh, this will help you if you need to fix yours too. Thank you.